this screencast, we're going to take a look at T accounts, particularly as they apply to inventory accounting. So to get started, let's begin with a balance sheet which consists entirely of T accounts. And we're really going to just focus on the ones that we would use most often in managerial accounting. Initially, none of the accounts have a balance, so just to get things started, let's assume that we put some cash into the business in exchange for stock. And so the journal entry that you can see now would be something familiar to you from a financial accounting class. And this is what it would look like if we took that journal entry and immediately went to the general ledger and represented it using T accounts. So notice the cash has a debit balance of 4,000 and contributed capital a credit balance of 4,000. Our first transaction is going to be to purchase some inventory of raw materials for cash. So initially we record this using a journal entry and then we would post that to the general ledger accounts and once again, we're going to represent the general ledger accounts with the t using T accounts. So you can see the debit to raw materials and the credit to cash. And as you can see, everything stays in balance. Now, once we start building a product, we're going to transfer some of the raw materials from the inventory to the work and process account, another inventory account. And you can see the credit to raw materials inventory, debit to work and process inventory. Let's add some labor, and we'll assume that the labor was paid in cash. So you see the debit to work and process inventory for 1200, credit to cash for 1200, and you see that now that the balance in the work and process account has increased to 1800. If at this point our inventory building process is complete, we transfer the goods from work and process inventory to finished goods inventory and that requires a debit to the finished goods account, credit to the work and process account. And finally, when we sell the finished goods inventory, we're first of all going to recognize some revenue, so the credit to the income statement, which as you'll remember is a retained earnings account, and a debit to cash, assuming we receive cash for payment. And we also want to recognize the cost of goods sold, and that results in the debit to the income statement for 1800 and the credit to the finished goods inventory for 1800 and you'll notice that we've maintained balance throughout and at this point the assets have a balance of $4,700 and the equities have a balance of 4700 Now here's another example of essentially the same sort of process but one that we often use in solving managerial accounting problems. First we'll start with the beginning balance of $10,000. We'll add to that direct materials of $25,000 and I'll show you the journal entry here as well. Debit work in process, credit raw materials inventory. Next we're going to add labor of $50,000. I'm not going to show you the credit here the credit is typically to something like wages payable and other accounts. Similarly, we add manufacturing overhead to work and process for 100000 And the credit here is normally to something called an overhead control account, a topic we'll talk about later in the course. Finally, some of the work and process is going to be transferred to finished goods. And this results in a credit of 165000 to work and process and a debit of 165000 to finished goods. And notice how the account balances also change. So the important thing here is that you should become familiar with how to just keep track of transactions using the T accounts. It's really a very important tool that accountants rely upon when they're trying to solve and learn these sorts of problems.